With the Analog Pocket Adapter Set, I can play Turbo Graphics, Neo Geo Pocket, and Atari Lynx games on my Analog Pocket. In anticipation of getting the Analog Pocket Adapter set, I've been checking out the retro game stores around Portland, Oregon to see what they've got. I've been on the hunt for Neo Geo Pocket, Game Gear, and Atari Lynx games, and have already got a stack of PC Engine Hue Card games to try. But first, here is my review. This is a set of three very high quality transparent shelled boards that plug into the back of the Game Boy cartridge slot on the back of the analog pocket that allow you to play game cartridges slash cards for these systems. They look great and they match the form and aesthetic of your analog pocket. It is the exact same process as using the Game Gear adapter and that's great. It wasn't broken and they didn't need to change it. You can play carts from any region of the various systems, which is good because the PC Engine slash Turbo Graphics was region locked. It will also play NEC Super Graphics games. You can specify which region you want the FPGA Neo Geo Pocket to identify as, and that's cool. On much of the software library for the Neo Geo Pocket, if you play a Japanese game on an American system, it will display in English and the Japanese versions are a lot easier to come by. Apparently, from what I've read online, the high-quality flashcards work perfectly for these three systems. And the Turbo EverDrive Pro supports CD games, but I haven't tested it myself. They released Analog OS 2.2 in anticipation of these adapters to add official Turbo Graphics Atari Lynx in Neo Geo Pocket cores. There is also a plethora of screen modes taking inspiration from the LCD screens on the Neo Geo Pocket, the Turbo Express, and the Atari Lynx, as well as the default analog display mode, which is a nice, crisp pixel presentation without any fancy filters. I'm glad to see that the CRT filter supports for the Turbo Graphics games are there, since it is a CRT TV-based system. With the handheld Turbo Express and games on cards, NEC was the first to make a portable that played the same games as a TV system long before the Nintendo Switch and Sega Nomad. Memory save states are supported for PC Engine and Atari Lynx, but surprisingly, not the Neo Geo Pocket. I don't know if that's on a per game basis or on a per system basis, but I hope that memory saves for the Neo Geo Pocket are included in future updates. But when it comes to the Turbo Graphics, it's a big plus. If you have a copy of Newtopia on TurboChip and don't want to bother with the hassle of passwords, you can use the memory saves. Sadly, I don't have a copy of Newtopia, so I wasn't able to test it if there's virtual memory bank support or not, but it would be cool to know. In the PC Engine section, there's an option called Hue Card Audio, and it has an audio level. This is on by default and it creates a low audible white noise. However, if you turn it off, it uses an FPGA virtual sound chip without any added white noise. I haven't been able to hear any differences between that. And I don't know much about this setting and unfortunately they have yet to update the manual regarding it. It's a pretty minor thing, but I just wanted to bring it up. The Sega Game Gear has two buttons and a start button. So, there's no button deficit playing them on an analog pocket. The Atari Lynx and Neo Geo Pocket are likewise do not have a button deficit. For the most part, the TurboGrafx slash PC Engine had a default controller similar to the NES with button 1, 2, select and run. But in Japan and in the US, there were updated versions of the gamepad that had built-in two-speed turbo switches. The turbo switches were a big deal and were part of the turbo branding. On the Turbo Graphics PCE adapter set and the Open FPGA core, you can en enable the X and Y buttons to be turbo buttons. So there is no button deficit for most Turbo Graphics PC Engine games. It was all good until the Street Fighter fighting game craze hit in the late 90s. 
In Japan, there is also an optional 3-button controller and an optional 6-button controller for the PC Engine. One cue card game that I totally wanted to try is Street Fighter 2 Dash for PC Engine. Not only is it the biggest cue card game ever made in both size and memory, it is one of my favorite versions of Street Fighter 2. I actually have a 6 button gamepad so I can play it on my core graphics original hardware. Now the analog pocket has 4 buttons on the front, but the L and R buttons are almost completely covered up by the adapter so it's a little tricky to play Street Fighter 2 Dash using a 6-button configuration the way that God and Capcom intended. It is possible to use the L and R buttons as middle buttons, as long as you have the tips of your fingers wedged into the tiny gap in between the cartridge slot and the buttons. You can customize the button layout by taking out the middle buttons and still playing a pretty decent game of Street Fighter 2 using four buttons. As a kid, I used to map the middle punch and kick buttons to the L and R buttons on the Super Nintendo controller and played Street Fighter 2 that way. I have a CIB copy of Street Fighter 2 Dash for PC Engine and it is important to test the outliers because if it can run these, then it can run everything else. By the way, the Open FPGA core for the PC Engine does support a 6 button layout using the L and R buttons and it's possible to play the game in 6 button mode but if you want to play it on hue card, then you are stuck with a four button layout unless you want to risk cramping your hand and playing it by the end of your fingertips. I don't have an analog pocket dock, but the 8-bit dough arcade stick is on the approved controller list, so if you really want to play the PC Engine version of Street Fighter 2 Dash on the original card on your analog pocket, that is an option. I didn't think I would spend half of the video review talking about one game, but that one game is one of the best versions of Street Fighter 2, so I'll allow it. It is only one game, but it's one of my favorite games. Some folks would have preferred it if they didn't bundle all the adapters together, but it's still a way, way cheaper to buy a bundle of all three adapters than it is to buy original hardware for any one of these systems. Having them bundled sort of forced my hands to get some Atari Lynx games to try out, and I'm okay with that, because I don't have a lot of history with that system. Despite not having memory save states, the Neo Geo Pocket really shines on the analog pocket due to the games almost fill up the screen perfectly due to a similar aspect ratio between the two systems. The screen is gorgeous and crisp compared to the non-backlit original Neo Geo Pocket hardware. The analog pocket D-pad is good and almost to the point that it made me not miss the clicky control stick on the Neo Geo Pocket. It will be interesting to see what happens to game prices for the Neo Geo Pocket games and Atari Lynx games now that there are thousands of retro game collectors with analog pockets that are now on the hunt for cartridges for these systems now that these adapters have shipped. But is the adapter set worth it? Well, if you already have an analog pocket, it is absolutely worth the added upgrade to increase the variety of retro portable cartridges you can play on it. Likewise, if you have a collection of games for these systems, it is totally worth your time to be able to play them in FPGA perfection on the analog pocket with its incredibly high quality screen, sound recreation, and performance. Now that my review is done, let's hunt for some games! First off, I drove over to Hillsborough, Oregon. I'm here at Retro Game Trader, here looking for some Game Gear and some Neo Geo Pocket. And some Atari Lynx. Here is the Neo Geo Pocket section. They have Puzzle Link, I don't know much about that, but Mark, a uh, match of the millennium, um, uh, SNK versus Capcom, I definitely want that. That's one that's been on my list, and I'm definitely going to get it. 
they have a Henshin Tigers Neo Geo Pocket Super Graphics and they have a Panasonic Q. You don't see this too often. They have a Henshin Tigers GameCube. Their Atari Lynx selection. I already pulled a game that I want out of there. Let's see. But I just bought my first Atari Lynx game. Bonx Adventure 85. Bomberman for the Turbo Graphics 89. One of the uh, adapters so you can play Japanese games on an American system, the Extenders, CDX, the Jaguar, in the box, complete in box Turbo Express, dual region PC Engine Duo. Very awesome that they have Abrebo Tengu, Zombie Nation, Layla, that's another quality Famicom game. And I like the fact that they actually labeled their Famicom games. Captain Saber, also known as Power Blade 2, the Famicom version, 349. You don't see that too often. Hey and Kill Alien. GameCube, in the box, component cables. They have a Casio Loopy in the box for all your video game and printing needs. I got Road Blasters and SNK vs. Capcom for the Neo Geo Pocket. I am here at the ever awesome Tappers Retro Games and Toys here looking for, there is a really awesome little scruffy copy, uh, but means, scruffy means pre-loved version of Mega Man X2 Extreme Game Gear section. Ooh, Sonic Drift 2. I will absolutely have to get Sonic Drift 2. And in the new Geo Pocket section, Hanabi. I believe that's a pachinko game for ten dollars and i'm thinking about getting puzzle bobble mini for 30 for the neo geo pocket i will absolutely need to get that i do not have a wonder swan but feast this is probably the most impressive looking wonder swan selection that i've ever seen actually japanese copy of sonic advance 3 i absolutely need that absolutely amazing modded well recap unmodded L uh, IPS modded, best looking Game Gear screens I've ever seen. And they have a Recap Turbo Express, Neo Geo Pocket Color, and an IPS upgraded Wonder Swan. That's out here at Tappers. I got Pachinko Hanabi. There's probably more to that, but I believe this is an awesome Pachinko game for Neo Geo Pocket Color. Sonic, a Japanese copy of Sonic Advance 3 for Game Boy Advance. Sonic Drift 2, Japanese copy for Sega Game Gear. Mega Man Extreme 2 for the Game Boy Color, American Edition. Puzzle Bobble Mini. And I got an officially licensed Xbox 360 messenger bag. Because I was looking for a new messenger bag, and why not get an Xbox 360 version? Alright, I am here at SideQuest Games, here to pick up my badge for SideQuest Expo, and also look for some Sega Game Gear and some Atari Lynx games. Adam's Family, Namco batters up. Mortal Kombat for Game Gear, I'm curious about that. Namco's Pac-Man for 7, Sonic Chaos, got that, Sonic 2. American Game Gear Shinobi 2. I have the Japanese one that I got here. Slime.
slider, slider, is slider any good? I'm gonna have to look into that. All right, into the Atari Lynx, there is. Awesome, golf, baseball heroes. Pokey, Turbo Sub, Packland for 30, Pinball Jam, Rygar, Leg Rygar Legendary Warrior, Todd's Adventure in Slime World, Hockey, 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 Casino, Checkered Flag, Hard Driving, 20, Blue Lightning, 25. I've heard of that one. California Games, $8. At SideQuest, I picked up Mortal Kombat for Game Gear. Pac-Man for Game Gear. California games for Atari Lynx. And Sneak King, the Burger King sneaking act stealth action game for Xbox 360. Then I headed up to Vancouver, Washington. All right, you're in double jump games. They have Neo Geo Pocket Color. Art Fighters Clash. But I see a King of Fighters R2 for 25 bucks. And look at that. Very nice camouflage blue. Neo Geo Pocket Color. Oh, the Neo Geo MVS. Trying to resist the urge to go down the Neo Geo rabbit hole. At Double Jump Games, I got Alienation on VHS, Bastard 1 and 2 dubbed in English on VHS, King of Fighters R2 Japanese on Neo Geo Pocket. Over to St. John's in Portland, Oregon. I am here in Final Form here to buy some retro video games, and I am getting rained on. I found the coolest custom version of Metal Gear for NES. Metal Gear! <laughs> it had a confidential case made out of a secret folder, and a redacted letter from President Barack Obama, where he is obviously talking about Metal Gear. I love how you can go through the loose games like you're digging the crates for records. Over here at Final Form, I got Psychic World for Game Gear. This one-of-a-kind copy of Metal Gear with a custom label and a letter from Obama, a secret letter from Obama. So. I saw this and I had to get it. That's going on the shelf. Over to Northeast Portland. I'm here at Flip Flop Games to hunt for some retro video games. I got Super Mario Brothers Deluxe for Game Boy Color. My kitty guy here wanted to let you know that we make awesome videos like this each week. So make sure that you are subscribed to this channel so that you don't miss them. This is 8-Bit Joystick, stay awesome, play retro.